Hi guys, welcome to Salesforce Troop. In today's video, we'll talk about SOQL Builder. So SOQL Builder is a Visual Studio Code extension that gives us the user interface for designing our SOQL queries against the Salesforce data. And in today's video, we'll cover first how to set up the SOQL Builder. Then we'll see how to use the SOQL Builder. And at the end, we'll see what all the limitation with the SOQL Builder. So let's start with the setup first. So SOQL Builder is a, available as a part of Salesforce extension pack. So if you guys are already working with the DX project and you already set installed the Salesforce extension pack, it means SOQL Builder is already available in your VS Code. The best way to check this is let's go to VS Code and I'm in my VS code now. You can go to this icon, which is the extension. And once you click on the extension, you will see a search box where it says search extension in marketplace. Here you can search sales Salesforce extension. And you can see the Salesforce extension pack is already installed here. That's why this kind of button is not visible here. If I click on this extension, it will show you what all other extension comes under this particular extension here if you scroll down you will see there is an extension called soql this extension if it's already available it means it's installed in your vs code the other way to verify it you can type directly soql and you can see this is already installed so which means soql builder is already installed in your machine now apart from this extension to be installed your vs code should have a ds project ready if you don't have any project ready you can create one project in your vs code here i already open the project in the vs code and the third step to before running the soql builder we have to make sure we are logged in to our default org and if you are not logged in or if you are Scratch org is expired, then you can't use your builder because SQL builder should uh, always connect it to a valid org through which we can run the query against the data. Right. So to verify it, I am already in my Scratch org and it's already connected here. So just make sure you already set up your project. It's authorized your project and you connect it to a valid org. That's the prerequisite to test your builder. So let's go and see now how we can use the SOQL builder. So for that, you can go to your command palette or you can use the shortcut as well, Control Shift P. And here you can type SOQL. And you can see there is an option called create query in SOQL builder. This option only comes once you have installed your extension. So select this option and now you can see you'll get a user interface. Now you don't need to write the query your own. You can just select from the drop down. So the first option is from so from which S object you want to run your query or create your query. So I'll select an account. That's the most common one, but you can use the custom objects as well basically what this tool does it fetch all the objects that's available in your org and the org which is connected to this vs code basically so let's type account i'll show you with the account object okay i want to run a query on the account object then you need to select the fields and here i can take the field the basic one is name then the other one is id i can take there are many fields you can see here it's saying all fields counts and all all fields if i select it will select all the field but it will be too many so and the last one i can say billing country let's go with the three fields side by side you can see there the query is forming select name id billing country from account then you have an option to filter filter gives you an option and or, or operator i can add some filter here but before that let's run the query so this is a very simple query select name id billing country from account and if i run the query it will show you the result immediately 
and once it shows the result in very clear manner and you can sort this out by clicking on this header everything is pretty clean and now we have a result like it returns 11 of 11 record because we are not doing any filtering then we have you can save this result to a csv if i click on csv it will ask where you want to save this that option you can save wherever you want then you can save the json if you want to store your data somewhere you can install the json or basically save the json file i'll not download it but you can and apart from that let's try now the filtering I'll close this result for timing and now I will do the filtering on billing country because if I run it quickly and show you let's filter it only the country that is USA okay so let's say billing country well USA let me add this and Run the query but i don't have to give the quote here it looks like because i i see here it's giving slashes so it's escaping that spaces so now it's looking good to me and let's run this query now and now you see it's return only two data earlier it was returning 11 records now it's returning two records and only records that are matching this filter criteria you can play around with this filter with the or condition and other conditions and now it's right now giving me the result first p and d let's play around with our order by as well so we'll do the order by on our name field i just want this name result to be in the descending order you can do your way whatever is your requirement but i am showing you a basic operation that you can play around with the sql builder and here i'll say name i want to do a order by on name and the direction should be descending and here you can choose an option that's pretty cool like null should be first or null should be last and i'll say null should be last and i'll close this result every time before running it's better to close the result otherwise it will open the new tab that's a one kind of limitation right now and i'll add this and now you can see that the order by name the query is already there and let's run the query and now you can see that d is coming before b so it does the descending order for the name field and this is pretty cool and similarly if you have many records right now i have only two records so if i say limit to one and close this and run the query it gives returns one but i'll not do this limit so i'll remove this close and run the query again now i have this query and the result is perfectly fine and now it's pretty easy because now you can play around with the query by visualizing it very clearly and then you can copy this query and verify it we can verify it and we can go to our developer org just to verify it's returning the same data or not and for that what we can do is we'll go to our org developer org or developer console basically so i'm in my developer console let me zoom a little bit and i have copied that query that we have written i'll paste it here now you can see that select name id billing country from account where billing country equal to usa and order by name descending nulls last so let's execute this and you can see it's written the same result so our vs code and this developer org is always in sync because the query is correct so it's both places it will return the same data and the other cool feature is you can save this query as well so if you press the control save or control s basically it will ask you where you want to save this and you can save before that i'll show you when you create the project nowadays the salesforce give you under the script there is an option a folder called soql and by default they give you one query already saved similarly we can save in the same place if you want to save your query i'll just say control s save and i'll go to the same folder under soql and i'll give this name as nick that's it or dot 
SOQL and let's save this now you can see this this query gets saved but tomorrow if you want to just verify okay what was the query I ran or you need something in the future you can save this query so this is how your SOQL builder works but sometime you don't uh, you want to write a complex query right but there we don't have an option of nested query or any other option right so in that case there is another way to write this query is you can click on this icon on the top and it will switch to a text editor so right now we have this query you can create and uh, you can switch to a text editor and let's write some nested query i already used it once i'll copy that same query so it's not too complicated but in this particular query let me copy this query first and let's go to my i'll use the default one that they return and i paste it here this query is basically doing it's running the query on the account object and fetching id name phone and website and apart from that it's fetching the contact objects field id name phone this is little complex query and now if i write the query in the text editor and switch it back to a vr builder and it immediately says your query contain a statement that soql builder doesn't currently support but we still run this query even though this error is there which means you can't write this query using the user interface but using the text editor you can write as much as complicated query you want and let's run on edit query anyway and let's run uh, directly you can click on run query basically and if you run the query here is our query that we have written and you can see that it's immediately return us the data in the user interface here so it's showing us the id and that id has associated accounts then the next record id account id basically then associated contact so likewise you can write your complex query but the only catch here is you need to write your complex query in the editor right so that's how our soql builder work and now this is the time to look into our limitations of soql builder so soql builder currently support interactive building simple query that i already explained to you like only simple queries you can build using a drag uh, like drop downs and all the user using interface for complex query you need to use the text editor the second point is when selecting field you can select only one field at a time so while selecting the field in the builder we can either select the all fields but if you want like couple of fields in one go you need to select each field separately the third point is every time you click run query a new soql query result tab appear that's little bit annoying that's why i was closing the tab again and again then the next point is soql builder support simple where expression you can combine condition using and or or but not both so when we were using filtering we saw we have an option of and and or but we can't do the both operation using builder and the point to remember you can run the complex query in soql builder if you see the unsupported for a syntax informal message that we already seen uh, we wrote the complex query but once we switch to a user interface it shows a message in the red color but we once we click on the run query it still returns the result so this is all about the soql builder and i would recommend you guys to play around with the builder there will be many new feature will get added in the future but i guess it's a pretty good start for us to play around with this and those who are very new to soql it's a great way to see how the query formation works and all so i hope you like this video and yeah Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.